In 2009, unusually powerful flares are happening in the sun's atmosphere. This is noticed by Dr. Helmsley, who travels to India to discuss things with astrophysicist Satnam. Together they visit a copper mine, where they use an elevator that takes them 11,000 feet underground. In the mine's lab, Satnam shows Helmsley that the current solar flares are the biggest in history and are causing the Earth's core to heat up, which he proves by opening a tank full of boiling groundwater. Fearing a global catastrophe, Helmsley rushes back to the USA to interrupt an important gala and reports the issue to Anheuser, the head of the presidential administration. Six months later in 2010, US President Wilson tells the G8 summit about the upcoming end of the world. The information doesn't reach the general public, but the most powerful people in the world start making plans. In the Tibetan Valley, they start building large arc ships for the elite chosen ones, but they tell the locals that they're building a dam. They relocate anyone that can't work and only people with certain skills are allowed to stay. In 2011, the arc tickets are being sold to the elite for 1 billion euros each. In the Louvre, Wilson's daughter Laura meets with the museum director to replace the Mona Lisa with a fake one and protect it from fanatics. In 2012, the general public still doesn't know the truth, but newscasts begin talking about the Mayan calendar and how many people believe the end of the world is coming, to the point where they're self-deleting in groups. Cracks are appearing on the streets of California but nobody takes them seriously, blaming them on a mini-quake. At the harbor, the passengers of a cruise are alarmed when the ship sinks a bit in the water. Later in the evening, Laura is called by the director of the Louvre, who informs her they've been lied to about the reason they moved the art and that he'll appear at a press conference to tell everyone the truth. Before he can say more, his car suddenly blows up and kills him. In the White House, Helmsley and Anheuser inform Wilson that their calculations were wrong and that the end of the world is coming faster than they expected. They're interrupted by Laura, who wants to know why the organization she works for is a sham. Wilson has no choice but to tell her the truth. Meanwhile Jackson takes his kids on a family trip to Yellowstone. They're surprised to see a bunch of helicopters flying by and that the lake area has been fenced, but they ignore the warning signs and just climb over it. When they reach the lake, they're shocked to discover it's dried out and there are dead animals around it. While a weird man called Charlie secretly watches them from the forest, the military arrives and takes the family away to their base. Helmsley tells Jackson that their geologists investigating what happened to the lake and that the area is unstable, so Jackson should take the kids away. After the family leaves, Helmsley calls Satnam, who informs him he had to seal off the mine and he's been receiving similar data from other countries. The Earth's crust has begun destabilizing, so evacuation must get started. Jackson and his children go to a camping area only to be cornered by Charlie, who wants to know what the scientists say and laughs at the answer as if he knew it was a lie. In the evening, Jackson notices Charlie is broadcasting from his van and listens to his radio show, during which he talks about the upcoming apocalypse. Jackson decides to approach Charlie for more details, and Charlie shows him a silly animation about the Mayan prophecy. When Jackson stays skeptical that such a big secret could be kept, Charlie explains that anyone who tried telling the public the truth died, which he proves with a bunch of newspaper articles. Jackson notices that a professor he used to work with died two months ago, and Charlie says that this professor sent him a map with the location of government spaceships. Finding the idea ridiculous, Jackson returns to his tent. The next morning, the earthquakes in California get worse and a huge crack on the ground causes a supermarket to split in two. Thankfully nobody gets hurt, but Jackson's ex-wife Kate calls him to ask him to bring the kids home immediately. In the meantime, Anheuser informs Wilson that only four arcs were finished, meaning it won't be possible to save enough people. In a meeting with the heads of all states, Helmsley shares a report and explains they only have two or three days left, so Wilson announces they're starting an evacuation plan. After dropping the kids at Kate's, Jackson gets a call from his boss, a Russian oligarch called Karpov. He's secretly preparing for the evacuation, so he orders Jackson to bring his twin sons to the airport. One of the boys tells Jackson that he'll die soon while he gets to escape on a big ship right before another mini-quake hits the area. Thinking Charlie may have been right after all, Jackson rents a plane and rushes back to pick up his family. At that moment, a more powerful earthquake hits California, and this time houses begin crumbling down. Jackson arrives just in time to pick up his kids, Kate, and her new boyfriend Gordon. As houses collapse all around them, the streets also begin breaking down, so Jackson has to drive like crazy to avoid falling into a pit. Soon other people try to escape too and the streets get crowded, causing Jackson to drive through front yards and trees until the car jumps off a ground platform. Downtown, bridges and skyscrapers are breaking down too, causing thousands of deaths. After lots of driving, the group finally makes it to the airport, only to discover the pilot is dead. Gordon has taken a few flying lessons but has no experience, so he nervously tries his best and manages to fly the family off right before the airport is destroyed too. Soon most of Los Angeles has gone down and the sea is starting to cover all the cities on the coast. Moments later, the family stops at Yellowstone to find Charlie and his map, but Charlie isn't in the van because he's waiting for the end on top of a mountain. Jackson drives the van all the way to the mountain to find Charlie, only to watch tons of birds fly by and the hills start to sink down. While Jackson goes away in the van, Charlie stays to keep on broadcasting as a volcano erupts and blows up the area. 
Volcanic rocks begin raining down, killing Charlie and hitting the back of the van. Thankfully Jackson drives fast enough to jump over a crack on the ground and reaches the airport just in time. He still needs to find the map in the van though, taking so long that the ground keeps on cracking and the van falls. Thinking Jackson's dead, Gordon prepares the plane to take off, but suddenly Jackson climbs out of the van at the last second and runs to grab Kate's hand. Once he's safe, the plane finally takes off and leaves the area before they're reached by the eruption. Then Jackson checks the map and notices they must go to China, so they'll need a better plane. In the evening, Anheuser and Helmsley watch reports of natural disasters happening all over the world. Important landmarks are being destroyed, millions of people are dying, and everyone is losing any glimpses of hope. Helmsley thinks it's time to tell the general public the truth, but Anheuser refuses until the chosen ones are on board the Arks, claiming it's for the sake of survival. Then they tell Wilson it's time to leave, but Wilson has decided to stay and go down with his people. Anheuser takes over command, ignoring Helmsley's protests, and the plane leaves with them and Laura, who receives a last call from her father to say goodbye. Afterward, Wilson finally makes a public announcement to let the world know the truth. Meanwhile Jackson's group has made it to the airport in Las Vegas, where Karpov is also waiting because all flights have been cancelled. He's brought his twin sons, his girlfriend Tamara, and even her dog. Jackson begs Karpov to take his family, but Karpov at first ignores him. However when his pilot Sasha finally finds a plane they can use, he explains he'll need a co-pilot, and Jackson's family offers Gordon. Karpov accepts to take them all and they run to get aboard a huge plane that is carrying cars. Air traffic control tells them they don't have permission to fly, but Sasha and Gordon work together and manage to take off, dodging a bunch of crumbling buildings and only hitting the top of a tower before they head for China. Moments later when they fly over Hawaii, they're disturbed to discover it's completely covered by lava and there are almost no buildings left standing. In Tibet, a Buddhist monk Nima receives a letter from his brother, who works with the Arks and has shared the truth. After getting permission from his master, Nima leaves the mountain and goes to pick up his grandparents. In Washington DC, volcanic ash won't stop falling, so Wilson opens the White House for people looking for shelter. When a little girl is looking for her dad, Wilson decides to help her and asks the paramedics outside, but suddenly an earthquake hits the area and brings down the Washington Monument. In the Vatican, people gather for prayer at a special mass, only to be interrupted by an earthquake as well. The building crumbles down and kills millions of people. At that moment, a report comes in announcing tsunamis forming all over the world. A cruise ship in the middle of the sea is flipped over by the strong waves and the workers can do nothing but accept their fate. In Washington DC, Wilson wakes up covered in ash among hundreds of bodies, only to watch a tsunami cover the area and kill any survivors from the earthquake, including Wilson himself. Meanwhile Helmsley discovers that the base with the arcs will also be underwater in around 6 hours and that the Earth's crust has shifted a lot. Both poles have reversed their magnetic fields and moved so much that the North Pole is now in Wisconsin. Back to Jackson's group, Sasha announces that the fuel is running out and he'll have to do an emergency landing. Once everyone is ready, Sasha and Gordon start to descend, only to discover there's no more ocean. Thanks to the continents moving, the plane has ended up in the Himalayas, pretty close to where the arcs are being built. Soon the plane loses its engines and flies too low, causing it to shake. Landing will be very difficult, so Sasha asks everyone to get into a car and exit through the cargo area. At first Gordon helps Sasha, but the pilot tells Gordon to join the others. The families go out together in a car that lands safely thanks to the snow, but all the other vehicles fly out and crash. Sasha manages to land the plane, but unfortunately it slides on ice and falls off a cliff, instantly exploding and killing Sasha. At that moment, Chinese cargo helicopters fly by as they carry animals to the arcs. Some officers notice the families and land to rescue them, however they only accept those who have tickets. Karpov leaves with his kids and the dog but doesn't take Tamara with him because he knows she cheated on him with Sasha, in fact he's happy the pilot is dead. The group wanders around for a while until they see a truck pass by, so Jackson throws a rock at it to make it stop. The driver turns out to be Nima, who agrees to pick them up. Meanwhile Helmsley's group also arrives in the area and notices lots of important people, like the queen and her dogs. Only four arcs were finished, but the third one got damaged by the earthquakes, and lots of people like Karpov aren't allowed to board yet. Helmsley and Laura are disgusted to realize that among the important scientists there are lots of rich people with no skills, yet not a single arc worker was given a ticket. When Helmsley gets into his cabin, he notices 10 people can fit there, yet they're favoring luxury. At that moment he gets a call from Satnam, who reveals no plane picked him up as promised and a tsunami is approaching his town, so he says a final goodbye before dying with his family. Afterward, a panicking Helmsley rushes to check the new data and reports that they only have half an hour before the wave hits the arcs. Outside the base, Nima arrives with the group, but his brother Tenzin refuses to receive anyone other than his family. Kate begs them to at least take the children, but the grandmother scolds Tenzin and convinces him to take everyone. The Arks are getting ready to leave and some people realize the workers couldn't fix the damaged ship, so the passengers of that Ark are being left behind. 
a furious Karpov punches a guard to make his way through the door, and the crowd immediately follows him towards the nearest Arkansas however the ship moves away from the platform, causing some people to try to jump. As a few people fall to their deaths, Tenzin leads the group to that same arc through an alternate safe path. Tamara notices her dog is with Karpov's children, so she whistles to call him over. The dog quickly walks on a narrow connection and reaches his owner right before the gates close, and Tamara says bye to Karpov with the middle finger. While Tenzin opens a secret passage inside the Ark for the group, Helmsley watches all the people falling off the platform and can't take it anymore. He contacts the heads of all countries and asks them to open the gate so the rest of the people can come too, but Anheuser interrupts him to point out that they only have 15 minutes left before the wave hits. Helmsley doesn't give up and talks about how they're losing their humanity, mentioning what happened to Satnam. When Laura adds that Wilson would have opened the gates, the leaders give in and authorize them to open the gates. Inside the Ark, Jackson's group gets in danger because they're sneaking around the lifting mechanisms, which start moving when the gates open. Tenzin and Gordon are pushed off and barely manage to hold on to the edge, but the spinning gears are hiring Tenzin's leg. Jackson rushes to help them and brings Tenzin back up, but unfortunately Gordon slips off and is ground to death by the gears. Jackson almost gets crushed too, but the cable they use to hold on gets stuck in the mechanism and jams it. The gate doesn't fully open, but it's still enough for the crowd to rush inside. With only four minutes left before impact, the wave is already getting closer and taking over the mountains, where Nima's master rings the temple's bell before dying. The gates start to close but Kopov is still outside, so at the last second he throws his kids into the ark before he falls to his death. Because of the cable from before, the gate doesn't close completely so the ark can't leave yet. The technicians check the cameras and find Jackson's group, so Helmsley runs to solve the issue. At that moment that tsunami finally hits the arcs, killing all the remaining workers in the base. Water gets inside Helmsley's arc through the open door and as people panic, the security system begins blocking the compartments one by one. The chamber with Jackson's group is quickly sealed too, splitting them up and leaving the chamber flooded. To make matters worse, the wave sends a plane crashing against the arc, causing it to lose the supports and bump into the other ships. They need to activate the engine to move away, but it's impossible to do it with a gate open. The tsunami causes the arc to shake uncontrollably and begins carrying it toward Everest, meaning they'll crash soon. Helmsley reaches the chamber and finds Jackson's daughter with the dog, then gets in contact with the rest of the group through the comms on the wall. He explains to Jackson how to unlock the lift mechanism and why it may be dangerous, but Jackson accepts the risk and dives in. When Kate is distracted helping Tenzin's injury, her son follows Jackson against his father's wishes and turns out to be helpful. He holds the flashlight so Jackson can use both hands. After lots of struggle, he finally pulls out the cable right as the bottom of the arc hits a rock formation. The gate finally closes and the technicians can start the engine, however the ship is moving too fast to turn it around in time. The arc begins colliding against the mountain and huge rocks begin falling on top of it, cracking a few of the windows. Thankfully the reverse motion activates before bigger damage happens and the arc moves away from the mountain as everyone celebrates and Jackson reunites with his family. Afterward, years start being counted as after the flood. On day 27 of month 1, Helmsley and Laura share their first kiss. At that moment, the captain announces that the skies are clear, so people finally get to step outside to see the sun again. As people in all three arcs enjoy the fresh air, Helmsley checks the reports from the satellites to learn the water is receding and the entire African continent has risen. The arcs immediately head there to start a new life. 